what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and this is the Project Iokin version 2.7 Glacier based on Android 12.1 and this is the first June 2022 build and of course this is a A11 firmware based ROM if you don't know what I'm talking about or if you want to flash this particular custom ROM on your device you can check out the cards or the description right now let me show you the about section this is how it looks like of course we have the Android 12 written right there but this is Android 12 L and let me actually show you with this clock if you try to make it 12 o'clock this is how it looks like still looks like of Android 12 but then again it's Android 12.1 and here we have the Awaken version as 2.7 Glacier of course GApps is mentioned because I always flash the GApps included variant and here the maintainer's name is Cyberbug and that's awesome 2069 pretty good joke I would say and here we have the May 5th 2022 security patch of course this is the first June build the security patch has not been updated yet but maybe in the next build it will be updated and here we have the stock kernel as many bataunga kernel and we have the SNX status as enforcing the build date here is of 31st May 2022 here it shows but this actually released on 1st June and here this is how the system settings looks like of course and we got the gesture settings right there so the first thing we got is the quick tap or the back tap functionality and with that if for taking a screenshot or something and as you can see it's working perfectly fine and let me just disable it but you can use it for your assistant and stuff if you want to let me go back we have the quickly open camera and we got the system navigation gestures in the settings we have the swipe to invoke assistant if you scroll down more we have the pill length customization then the full screen gestures and the haptic feedbacks as well there is a dead zone but i find it like a little bit annoying because as you can see this dead zone if i enable it and right now if i try to go back from here sometimes from the ui it doesn't work so yeah this is how it's supposed to work but yes i don't use it personally if you are someone who uses that the dead zone feature is there and of course if you swipe from the corners the google assistant will appear no issues with that let me go back from here we have the two button and three button navigation as well and for the three button layout we have the inverse layout option let me go back and we have the press and hold power button for the assistant and stuff and we have the one handed feature too you can also use it for the quick setting panel here we have the playback control the volume control and the long press power button toggle torch the prevent ringing option is there and the advanced restart option is there the double tap to sleep and the deorient option is also there also i think i forgot to mention the swipe right screenshot is there and yes it works perfectly fine there is the share edit delete and capture more feature right now let me show you even more stuff like the live translate feature is there the front camera settings is there but there is no front camera calibration option over here but of course you can change the sound of the front camera appearing if you want to and there is also a updater and this updater i would say definitely looks closer to oxygen os kind of style i feel let me know in the comments what do you guys think but yeah this updater looks pretty fancy i would say let me show you the security section and let me show you in the settings we got the quick unlock then a lot more options like the secure quick setting toggles and we have the disable power menu unlock screen option a lot of privacy options are there and of course i have added the face data and here we also have the pixel imprint or the fingerprint sensor data and of course i have added two fingerprints I'll show you the fingerprint scanner speed but right now let me show you the app lock and yes it does work and of course you can lock any particular app from right here but before that let me just enable the always on display and right now if I double tap on the status bar as you can see this is how the always on display looks like and yes double tap to wake does work over here no issues whatsoever with that and even double tap to sleep on the lock screen does work right now if I just hold my finger over there it just unlocks let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed a couple more times and as you can see it unlocks fine let me show you the speed again the speed is not a problem with the fingerprint scanner at all i would say let me show you a little more even from the lock screen you can unlock of course and here if i just tap my fingerprint scanner on the lock screen as you can see it unlocks let me try one more time so yes it does that kind of animation but then again in this rom we don't have any fingerprint scanner icon or animation changing option as of right now and right now i'll show you the face unlock speed so for that you have to double tap on the like always on display and or if even if you have always on display turned off you can just double tap normally and if you swipe up then it will use the front camera and as you can see it will unlock just like this let me try one more time if i swipe up i look at the camera and of course it does unlock pretty fast no issues whatsoever now it's time that i show you the app lock or the app unlock kind of thing and this is how the app lock ui looks like this background kind of settings it happens in all the roms as of right now i don't know why i think it's there for the android sources or something 
the settings the last time you went to any settings it will open in the background that's how it is with the app lock and here if i tap the fingerprint scanner and as you can see it opens wherever i left it so yes app lock is working perfectly fine here no problems at all now let's talk about the stock launcher of course we have the pixel launcher present by default here everything just feels buttery smooth with the stock launcher and yes swiping down anywhere in the home screen will get you to the quick setting panel no issues swiping up will get you to the app drawer and you can search for any particular thing that you are searching for it will appear right there even the other searches like the contact searches and stuff will appear in here and the widgets are working fine and even the animations the android 12 l animations are there and they are working great and in the quick setting panel too if you are worried about the animations yes they are working fine no issues whatsoever and of course to the left we have the google's discover page we don't get the double tap to sleep anywhere in the home screen but we do have that on the status bar only but that's how it is and here we get a gcam by default it just shows that it's a 8.1 gcam snap cam i would say let me go back with the gcam it takes really good pictures and the ultra wide angle lens is working fine the 2x telephoto lens is working fine too also the main sensor is of course working and in the video settings we have up to full hd and 60 fps and you can also switch to 4k but if you switch to 4k it will jump back to 30 fps and that's how it is now we have the portrait mode as well and even with the portrait mode the front camera selfies and stuff should be working great no issues with that also we have the night sight option so even the night sight works with the front camera as well and if you want to switch the back camera yes night sight will be working with all three lenses and that's just awesome even you can shoot night sight photos with the ultra wide angle lens or the 2x telephoto lens if you want of course we don't get any anx camera or something over here as of right now in android 12 but that's how it is you can try to install it with uh, magic and stuff i'll link a guide for that in the description but yes in this particular rom i haven't tried that yet but it may work or may not i'm not really sure about that but yes the stock gcam is working perfectly fine here no issues now let's talk about the basic things here we have the safety net tester and if i run that test the safety net actually passes right out of the box without any problems on this particular rom and that's really awesome you can use banking apps right out of the box over here i was surprised to see that the dlm info has turned l3 i have no idea why but i'll test it with other roms too if this does not get fixed i'll try to fast forward flash me why and see if the problem goes away right now let's talk about the quick setting panel shall we this is how it looks like and of course the color you are noticing it's like adapted from the background color or the wallpaper color and of course you can change it if you want to here we have the quick setting toggles you can edit and add even more toggles if you want to like these ones if you're noticing all these toggles you can edit any of them right now let me show you which ones i have added there is the wi-fi then the mobile radar toggle and the bluetooth toggle and stuff there is the dark theme and the auto rotate hotspot nightlight the always on display toggle is there the screen recorder is there of course and whenever you are tapping on any kind of toggle it gives you a haptic feedback that's awesome we have the device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time then the nearby share the do not disturb data saver battery saver and the google home controls are there too and here we also have the extra dim feature and the sound toggle too is there so this is how it looks like and as you can see you can switch the output device if you have connected to a bluetooth headset and once you have connected to a bluetooth headset there is that bluetooth battery icon if you're noticing and even on the quick setting panel it will show you the battery percentage of that particular device and in the power menu we have the advanced settings so you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot now let me talk about the dark theme a little bit this is how it looks like and once you enable the dark theme if you're noticing the background is grayish and i can't really find the option to actually enable the complete dark theme over here but that's how it is as you can see even in the dark theme there is no like pitch black option over here in the display settings i mean there is the monet theme engine customization in here too we don't have the like background color to pitch black or something i can't really set that so that's how it is i thought this is a point that i should mention so right now this is how the settings panel looks like of course and in here we get all the settings and here we have the battery settings the thermal profiles you can actually change the thermal profiles for the benchmark apps and stuff as you can see and you can set the thermal profiles to these many options and i'll show you the benchmarks later but this is how the battery settings looks like we have the battery manager and the charging light and stuff you can enable it however you want to the battery temperature shows up and there is a battery health but there is no battery charging cycle showing up option over here that's how it is but at least we are getting the battery health section so that's great only the percentage shows up of the battery health but that's how it is if you want more information you have to go with other roms i would say now let me talk about the battery life here i have tested it with the aku battery app and with that i have been getting about seven hours plus screen on time 
yes i haven't used the device heavily at all but of course with decent kind of usage it will give you seven hours of screen on time and that's just awesome even like i'm using the original battery over here and for that my battery health shows up as 73 percent and let me tell you my battery is at like 700 plus charging cycles so yeah you can guess the battery health is not that great but even with that i'm getting seven hours plus screen on time here it shows so it should be great i would say the battery life is very good over here no complaints and let me tell you about the charging info the 33 watt fast charging or the 18 watt fast charging is working fine here no issues whatsoever in the sound settings this is how it looks like we have all the volume controls then if you scroll down more we got the vibrator intensity and individually you can control the notification vibration the ring vibration and the haptic feedback that's awesome we also have the default sound of notification changing option and stuff and we have the touch vibration per app volume control charging vibration and the screenshot sound enabling or disabling option and the in call vibration you get on the bottom but let me tell you there is no me audio dirac over here or there is no dolby atmos kind of thing but then again we don't even get the me audio dirac i don't know why over here but don't get me wrong the sound quality via the headphone jack the bluetooth and the speakers as well and the earpiece as well should be really good over here i haven't faced any kind of sound quality issues it was great in the display settings we have the brightness level the adaptive brightness and stuff the lock screen settings are there if you scroll down more you will get a lot more things like the ripple effect lock screen charging info the double tap to sleep and the show media art and stuff and the double line clock is there then we have the privacy controls and stuff here we have the headline and body fonts as you can see we also get some oneplus fonts over here we also have the icon shape changing option and the display size and stuff you can actually change the dpi also again we have that monet theme engine customization let me go back the colors are set to boosted and we have the adaptive and the rgb control over here and if you scroll down more we get the pocket detection the double tap to wake and the high touch polling date i'm not really sure how that works but yes that option is there in the display customization we have all these icon customizations like the battery icon style you can actually change from here also the battery percentage position you can change then the battery estimates and in the clock settings we have all these clock settings like the center clock the left right etc position you can change the mpm style and the date format you can actually adapt from here then we have the status bar items and from here you can enable the headset bluetooth etc icons a lot more options are there combined signal icons the 4g lte option is there the roaming indicator my camera privacy and stuff of android 12 l is there the brightness slider you can also have it for the bottom and stuff you can enable it from right here the network speed you can also go for that if you want to then the ambient edge lighting or the ambient edge notification is there i guess and the always on when charging option is there if you want the always on display to turn on only when charging let me go back we have the hidden apps so you can hide some particular apps all over the ui and then the ambient display customizations you get over here there is the wallpapers and styles and in here we have the change wallpaper options and you can change the wallpapers from right here of course there are a plethora of google kind of wallpapers i've been using a wallpaper with the wallp app that works fine and we have these like wallpaper colors you can actually change it from right here dark theme option is there again and we have the themed icons and in terms of the app grid up to 5 by 5 option for the app grid is there now if you want to know about the performance and stuff with daily driving yes the performance was great i haven't had any issues whatsoever on this particular rom like you can actually go into split top mode just like this and with the split top feature it works perfectly great if you're noticing so yeah you can switch between apps just like this no issues with that but let me tell you all over the ui i haven't faced any kind of major issues at all the overall performance of this rom was great and here are the end to end geekbench score with the cpu stress test on this particular build so if you ask me what do i think about this rom i would definitely say that this is one of those roms which are in the like middle grounds that doesn't have too much customizations which will not bother you if you don't love customizations you can just definitely stay away and it will still look like pixel over here but if you are someone who actually is looking for a lot of customizations you may find it a lot more like basic if you want really really amazing amount of customizations and all over the UI the animations the whole UI stays smooth and of course the dark theme is missing the pitch black option but that's how it is as of right now the pitch black feature might be added in the future builds i'm not really sure if you don't need those you can definitely go for this rom the always on display works fine the fingerprint scanner works fine everything just works flawlessly over here no issues that i have faced so give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kerry and tech signing off for today i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now